Okay, now we go to the different uh, physiologic factors which try to affect the test results. Again, you should be very uh, considerate with uh, following physiologic factors because, of course, it would really affect the results. The first one, we have here the posture. For the posture, so just changing the position of the patient, so uh, uneasy ang ating patient, like you try to change the position from sitting to lying position, Siya, upo siya. And again, that's right before the blood extraction. Uh, what's going to happen with that, the water here within our blood vessels try to redistribute in such a way na pwedeng lumabas ang water dito sa, if this one's your blood vessels, lalabas ang water dito. Okay, so pwede mag-leak out ang water natin in the blood vessel wall or the blood vessel membrane. However, here among uh, molecules natin, especially for the large mole molecular weight substances, hindi sila pwedeng makalabas and therefore they will be concentrated within your blood vessels. So, dito sila, okay, dadami sila dito na walang water. And when we are extracting the blood, diba, so ito ang extract natin. So, this, whatever your test result here, um, that being analyzed through your blood, that would be reflected here dito sa, this will reflect here kung anong concentration ng mga substance dito. Since, uh, nagkaroon ng redistribution of the water content, because again, an easy patient natin, thereby, uh, it would eventually try to concentrate those large molecular substances within your blood vessels. And expect to have your high uh, level or high concentration or increased concentration of those high molecular weight substances. So this includes here your cholesterol, your iron, and we have also your protein again because they could not be able to pass through here our plasma membrane. Second one, we have here the diurnal variation or the rhythmic uh, variations. Again, there are some analytes or substances or body where in they are highest in some or specific time of the day. Like, for example, here during the morning, the following here will be present a very high concentration. We have your cortisol, your iron, and we have also here your TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. On the other hand, we have here during the afternoon or during the evening time or the afternoon time here, so eosinophil is highest on that particular time of the day. What will be the significance of that? So, if you are asked, what, what will be the best time to collect the blood sample? Okay, so it should be in the time wherein they are highest in our, or they are highest in a concentration in our body. So, kung mataas siya dapat sa, sa afternoon, then you collect the blood during the afternoon. Because if you collect it during the morning, like in the case for your sinophil, baka wala kang makita, it will have your false um, decrease in the result of that. Another one we have here, the exercise. Exercise here would have a great effect on all your muscle proteins. So actually the effect of the exercise here would be highly dependent on the duration and the extent of the, the exercise. Because strenuous bang exercise niyo or light lang the exercise. But most likely, again, it's right affects here all our muscle proteins. So, example of that, we have here mga muscle proteins natin related to your muscles here. We have the following analytes, creatinine, creatine kinase. We have also here your AST, aspartate amino transferase. We have also here your uh, total protein, myoglobin. So, muscle din ang myoglobin natin. WBC count. And we have also here the HDL or your high-density lipoprotein cholesterol. Okay, next we have here the stress or anxiety. Uh, would tend to increase here the WBC count. So, like, included also here would be excessive crying, especially for the children, di ba? Pag ginawa na ng dugo, iyak ng iyak. Expect to have your high WBC count because of that excessive crying or stress related to the patient. Okay, the next one, we have here the diet. So, again, there are some analyzed wherein you, the patient requires here to undergo fasting, especially for the blood chemistry na mga analytes, like your sugar, even your mga lipids, like your cholesterol, um, triglyceride na, okay, na measurement or determination. But then again, in the HEMA, uh, most likely hindi siya ganun ka really required. 
ang ating uh, fasting for the collection of the blood sample. But then again, pero pag like for in the case, for example here, where the patient would have your high uh, meal right before the blood extraction would tend to increase the lipid concentration the plasma. Magiging turbid ang plasma na patient natin, especially pag sobrang daming kinain ni patient before the meal. And you call that one as pag naging turbid siya, you call that one as lipemia. Lipemic sample or lipemia here is actually a turbid na sample because of the heavy meal. And most likely sa chem natin, um, uh, we try to associate the lipemia here with high lipid concentration. Okay, uh, what will be the effect of that lipemic sample in our hematology test? So there are some tests in the hematology wherein we measure that one using your spectrophotometry. Okay, so pag spectrophotometry is based on the turbidity kasi, amount of the light na inaabsorb ng substance mo. So, the more turbid your sample here, the higher the concentration of that. So, ang ginagamitan ng spectrophotometry, uh, you tend to measure this one through your spectrophotometric method na test for the, the hematology. We have here, the first one, we have here your hemoglobin through the method na cyan meth hemoglobin method of determination. Another one, coagulation studies. Coagulation studies here, like your uh, PT, prothrombin time, of also your activated partial thromboplastin time, those are coagulation studies. It's also based on the optical na special photometry then, optical na method. And therefore, the, that would also be affected by your high, uh, heavy meal of the patient. Then we have the smoking. So smoking here, Smoking right before the blood extraction would tend to increase your WBC count and the cortisol level of the patient. But if the patient would be on the long duration of the smoking, so uh, long-term smoking would have most likely affects the result here with your hemoglobin concentration, specifically the carboxy hemoglobin level. Okay, now we go to the different uh, blood uh, extraction of blood collection method. So the choice here of what blood extraction method are you going to utilize here is highly dependent on how much of the blood you're going to collect and what are the tests that you're going to perform or even what instruments are you using, manual method ba kayo or automated method. So again, the first con consideration will be how much of the blood are you needing. So Again, we have here different blood collection procedure. You could have the skin puncture. You could have your venipuncture. So, of course, here, if you're just having a skin puncture, of course, you'll be collecting only small volume of the blood. It will not be possible here if the patient, for example, would have several tests to be performed on that, on the blood sample of the patient. And you just cannot prick naman, di ba? Every now and then, okay, when you are needing the blood. So, small sample of the blood, could only be applicable here with your skin puncture. Skin puncture, we could use this one for like when you're doing your manual na CBC. Could also have the blood typing or even the blood smear preparation. Okay, we have here the ideally the skin puncture is ideal only here for the newborn, for the uh, patient less than one year old. And we have also even for the adult patients, however, their veins are fragile veins. But then again, again, you're just you're able only to collect uh, blood sample here very small concentrations. So, it's enough if, like, for example, my mom blood chemistry is the patient. So, madaming request niya po ede. Okay, then we have here the again the blood that we are collecting here when we are doing the skin puncture. We call that one your capillary blood. Okay, capillary blood. But skin puncture blood is actually a combination of the different uh, sources of the blood. So, it's a combination of your venous blood, your arterial blood, and even your tissue fluids or interstitial fluids. And like when you are doing your venipuncture, you're puncturing the veins, so it's venous blood. When arterial puncture, it's artery blood, arterial blood. But then again, the skin puncture is a combination of uh, the different blood sources. Arterial blood, the venous blood, and we have also interstitial fluids. So when you are doing here your skin puncture, so try to puncture less than two millimeter deep. Okay, so it should not be extending beyond more than two. 
Why? Because your blood vessels or capillaries in your skin is only located between 0.35 to 1.66 millimeter. So, pag ma ma malalim pa doon, ang patutusok na natin ay buto na ni patient. Sobrang okay, sakit na yan. So, again, you just allow here the puncture less than 2 mm uh, deep of the puncture. Okay, so when you're ex um, pricking this, the finger of the patient, so do not squeeze and squeeze. Usually, nag-squeeze tayo pag mababaw ang tusok natin. So, since you'll be collecting blood, hindi pa enough, then so gagawin natin squeeze na squeeze just to collect the blood sample here. But when you're doing the squeezing or excessive na squeezing, again, you are already collecting not the blood sample, but it would always already be much ano na siya, um, included or added with your tissue fluids na. Pag tissue fluids magiging uh, diluted ng blood na sample ni patient, so pag nagawa ka ng hematocrit determination, hemoglobin concentration, so since diluted na siya, magiging anemic ang magiging result mo for that. Therefore, do not excessively squeeze that one. So just need to puncture it correctly uh, with the correct depth or adequate na depth of the puncture. Again, always, when you're doing your skin puncture, always the first drop of the blood should eventually be wiped off. Again, because the first drop of the blood is a contaminated blood, so it's contaminated with the tissue skin, so therefore, you need to wipe it off. Always remember that one. So, pag the skin puncture, first drop the blood, wipe it off. Then, squeeze again, try to collect the second drop of the blood for your sample for that. Okay, so we have here, comparing your blood collected with your skin puncture, with your whole blood, for example. Anong pinagkaiba ng blood natin na collect skin puncture and your whole blood? The blood collected through your skin puncture would have decreased result with the RBC count, with the hemoglobin, with the hematocrit, and the platelet count compared with your whole blood. Compared ka, kung kinolect mo siya through your very puncture. On the other hand, the blood collected here with your skin puncture would have 15 to 20% higher WBC count compared with your full blood. So, yung pinagkaiba nila. That's why most likely when you are doing the skin puncture, you need to take note in the result form of the patient na this blood is collected by skin puncture. Um, may mga physician or even mga beds, uh, especially for the pediatrician, uh, they are really wanted or they are really requesting that you're going to extract the blood of the patient more than the skin puncture. So, saan tayo pwede mag-perform ng skin puncture? For the infants, okay, so, since maliliit pa makamay nila, okay, so just puncture the plantar surface of their foot. So, ideal site when you're going to puncture here is this one, this, dito na side, sa ito na side. This is your medial side, so papaloob. This is your lateral side. Of course, here, di tayo magpapuncture dito, di ba? So, kahit gaano mo ka-squeeze ito, wala ka makukuha ng drop of blood. Kaya dito ka dapat mag, ganyan, mag-squeeze dito. At dito ka magpapuncture. But then again, between the two here, the medial side and the lateral side, the medial side, look at that one. The medial side contain here the posterior tibial artery, my artery ton. So between the two, if you have the trans here, between the medial side and the lateral side, so dito, dito ka magpapuncture in a part. Sorry, dito na side. So between the two here, between your medial side and the lateral side, so pinaka-safe would be your lateral side because of that. Kasi may posterior tibial artery in your medial side. Okay, another one, you could also puncture here the big toe of the patient or the baby only when the baby started to walk already. Medyo malaki na kasi yan. For the adult, okay, uh, for the adult, alam nga naman dito tayo sa plantar surface, di ba? Malaki na siya. For the adult, ideal site for the performance skin puncture would be your finger. We have the third and the fourth finger. Okay, so when you're doing here the, the third or fourth finger puncture, so again, you try to puncture here at the side. 
hindi tayo magpa-puncture dito sa gitna at the side. And then, make sure that one, so, kung, kung ito ang finger niya, may mga fingerprints yan, try to puncture pa ganun against the fingerprint na reach or edges, okay, not towards or along with the fingerprints. You need to puncture here against the fingerprints in order for you to have a drop of the blood. Hindi siya para pag nag-squeeze ka, mag-perform ang drop ng blood. Kasi pag nag-puncture tayo, if you're puncturing it, again, uh, katulad nito, along the fingerprints, kakalat ang blood of patient pag squeeze ka, it would be difficult for you to collect the blood sample with your capillary troops. Okay, so we have also here the areas na hindi dapat pinapuncture. Okay, not unless na sa dista ka. Okay, so we have swollen, di ba? Namamaga na nga, tutusukin mo pa. Bruce, punctured, grabe no. Nangingitim na, tapos iba puncture muna. Pa din. But then again, sometimes, uh, wala kang choice. Like for example, like if you are monitoring for the blood of the patients, like when you're having the platelet count, for example, pag dengue ang patient. Pag dengue kasi ang patient, we tend to monitor the platelet count every now and then. So, kahit... Okay, madami ka ng tusok, wala kang choice, di ba? Kasi yun lang ang pwede mong tusokin na sight mga fingers. But as much possible, okay, so wag mo namang, you know, kung may choice ka naman, so avoid swollen, swollen, bruise, and punctured area. 